Hello, I'm Michael Cassidy. Thanks for coming to our channel. Uh, we're doing just a little documentary today talking about short haircuts. Uh, barbershops are mostly short haircuts, layered haircuts, uh, shears, uh, thinning shears, razors, uh, buzz haircuts, brush haircuts, surfer haircuts, flat tops, uh, gentleman cuts, uh, a variety of different hairstyles that are done in the barbershop. And I wanted to uh, talk to you just a little bit today and show you some of the cuts that we've done here in the shop and we'll discuss some of those flat top haircuts and the different ones that we do, the, the short top cuts. Now what you got here are the finished results. The military man's cut, so what we did left a real good full look. And actually uh, faded the hairline in. Now I think I used a one, a two, and a three leaving it completely full and uh, I also used my thinning shears toward the end about a quarter of an inch from the end I also diced the hair some on top cut the bangs a little bit, I might cut a little more for that bang, I don't know thing turned out really good so we got a good military look that he's teaching now in the military so this is one of those haircuts we really enjoy doing a flat top and I've cut his hair so many times that I'm pretty fast at it. And I think he gets a lot of compliments on it over the years. He said he did. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, good. <laughs> Had to pull that out of him. Appreciate you. Yeah, that's a pretty decent flat top. I'm about to get finished with it here. This is one of the shorter cuts that we do at flat top. And I actually did this with a, a one blade up on the side. Come up here to the high part and then come right in here. Finish facing this in. Kind of a high and tight flat top with a, you know, pretty tight, but not a one blade not too awfully tight. A pretty snug looking cut. I wanted to show this flat top to y'all. I'm going to be showing you a few more flat tops in this documentary. Uh, Most often people don't get this quite short enough right in the center when they do a flat top. Probably about a, a quarter of an inch, a little less in the center. That's a quarter of an inch blade. You just take that center out and try to keep your weight flat right on the center. Try not to angle down. If you go to angling down, that way you'll have a round buzz top, so you want that. Take your hairspray or some kind of styling aid and come in there pull it up there and cut it, you won't have any problems with it. I'll finish the rest of the cut off camera, but... This is another example of one of the shorter haircuts we do. It's kind of a side shot. Sides, a kind of a side spice, what we used to call it. It's just like a one and a two, cut with a four and a three. Then scissor cut up front, just a little bit longer. A real neat looking haircut. That's a little scar there he's got. A, it's pretty, pretty doggone good. Anyway, that's just another example of one of the shorter type haircuts. I am, uh, I'm, I'm writing notes now to write a book. My children and grandchildren have been urging me on for decades to write children's stories because mm -hmm. I tell such good stories to them at night when they go to sleep. Yes. Just make up spontaneously because I have a great imagination. Might be your gift and don't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been making more notes and want, to, and want to take time to do that. I've already got an illustrator who will help you with a book. And yeah. matter of fact, he's down at Garden City. Yeah. Barney, Barney Slice. Oh, I know Barney. You know, you met him. He's Barney. been out here before, yeah. He's a friend of John Morris. Yeah, he came in with John Morris, yeah. He's, he's a good. famous painter, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's a good guy. But anyway, I've been doing that, and also I've been writing memoirs. Now, you think that, that sounds like somebody being cocky, but I'm just talking about memories of a redneck boy in a little town of yeah. Chester, South Carolina. Yeah. Growing up in the 50s. I was born in 44. Yeah. So I'm writing memoirs about memories that I had then, and I, I went to a reunion of recently, it was really a funeral of a friend of ours who wanted a celebration. And I saw friends of mine and they told me tons of stories I'd already forgotten about. <laughs> so I'm going to start getting together with them and I, making more notes. And it's interesting to people. They want to oh, see yeah. about it. They want to hear about it. They want to yeah. see about it. And it's a, it's, it's a very uh, safe um, uh, kind of uh, rearing that we had. You left your oh, door yeah. unlocked, 
in the 40s and 50s. Well, 50s. 50s or 50s and yeah. 60s. I mean, I were a teenager in the 50s. Yeah, I was high school class of 62. Mm -hmm. I'm 70 now. But it was just the most awesome, safe uh, well, environment. Environment to be well, raised in. Yeah, great Christian and very safe, and everybody in town knew you. You, <laughs> you could take off, and as long as you were back home at six o'clock for supper, your mom and dad didn't worry about you. It was a it was a great, great childhood. What I did here on the back of his hair, and I actually likes to just taper down the last inch here. And this is what you call a fast taper here at the back, leaving it full. And uh, he had to cut early, and I just went back over and just deeped it up a little bit. And uh, been going to the beach a lot lately. Like said somebody down there to cut, and I'm a, they don't do a lot of fade. A lot of people just not in the barber shop. Yeah, they don't have to. Yeah, they don't really get into that. And, and I had more time to spend on this. It takes a good while to do this when I had to cut the whole haircut. It's yeah. To really get this right, you have to really spend a little time on this to fade this down. So this is one of those shorter haircuts. It's real desirable, I think. It's real neat looking hair. I think you really enjoy this one. You know what I call that, Mike? What's that name? The William Holden. <laughs> Shows William how old Holden. I am. Bill, Bill Holden was a great movie star back in the 40s and 50s. Yep. And that's the way Bill did his, his hair. He did the same one. He looked so good. So I, I, I try to tell people, uh, hey, you remember Bill Holden? But not many people did. <laughs> I remember that name. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all play much golf now? I've had a bad back for three months, so I haven't been able to, but I think I'm getting close, mm -hmm. close to being well. Mm -hmm. Pinch nerve. Remember that time you come in and had that golf club and swung and broke my light? <laughs> Tell me about that. Other oh, place, you remember? You broke a light like that? Yeah, a light bulb, yeah. Oh, and that's it's all right, but don't worry. <laughs> tell, tell Sproul that story, okay? Please <laughs> tell him. Sproul me. comes and I'll pick at him. Yeah, you pick at him about being a world champion golfer. World cha won the world championship. It must have been a long shot, the one he hit. No, he sank about a 10 foot putt. <laughs> and it was dead even. And he had, the pressure was on him. His last shot was for the group was his putt. And he made it. He, won the, he said, Championship of the world. <laughs> but you tell him a golfer told him, and you're not going to tell him who it was. He probably guessed. You tell him the same golfer was and taking a crack swing with his club, waiting one day and broke out one of his worst lights. He probably knew who it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I got about that. Yeah. Okay, that thing turned out pretty good. Let me look at it a little closer here. So when they interview me on the golf channel, right after I win the U.S. Open and the Masters, Mike, I'm going to bring them out here to let you tell them that story. That would be pretty good. That'd be, you did pretty good one time, didn't you? Oh, I've had, I've had some near do wells. <laughs> yeah. That thing faded pretty good, buddy. I'm real pleased with that. Yeah. Okay, everybody got a chance to see that, that cut. That's one of our shorter cuts, a gentleman's type cut. Yeah. That's really super neat. I'm glad to get yours on here today. Okay, he wanted just really full this time, so that's a good choice, I believe. It's one of the shorter cuts we do, but it's the full the full look, so. I think he really likes it. Suits him. Okay. Take three. Little cap top, pretty good there. Feels pretty good on your head. Yeah, I'm not sure it came to that top. How about eight bucks? Uh, I don't think I do eight. Okay, that's it. What about maybe... Five bucks. I can do five. Okay. Well, well that's a deal. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay, you got me, buddy. <laughs> South Carolina's where I call home. There's long leaf pines and the deer still roam. Sugarloaf Mountain is the highest hill. Bear Creek flows down to Till's Mill. I'm a country boy as anyone can tell Lived a lot of cows and a loaded hay Chop wood till my hands ache I pulled corn till I couldn't no more. Earned a living by the sweat of our brow. We worked hard and we lived proud. It's this country life I love. Hey, boy. You want something to drink? Go ahead and get him a water out right there in that refrigerator. Get you one if you want it to. Okay. I'm moving to the city one of these days. Moving to the city one of these days Moving to the city gonna stake my claim Where the milk and the money's flowing That's the place 
place I'll soon be going Where the streets are paved with gold And the path has not been told I'm a country boy right now But I'm moving to the city one of these days I'm a country boy right now I'm moving to the city one of these days Thank you. <laughs> Fishing up this little guy's haircut. It's one of my best customers here. Every time I see him at church, what do you say? Hey, Mr. Michael. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't even talking now, man. What's wrong? <laughs> you got shy. You got camera shot real quick. <laughs> I saw you at church eating all that food the other day. What's your favorite one? What's your favorite food you like? Mm, chicken hmm? nuggets. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, he, he likes broccoli. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you like eating now? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite right food? Ice cream? Ice cream! <laughs> Some of them Cheerios in the morning? What you like eating in the morning? Peanut butter sandwich? No. I like eating wooden sandwich. <laughs> Once you use, you'd use about a, I think that's going to be a sixteenth blade, or an eighth blade, a sixteenth blade. Uh, guard. Quarter of an inch guard. Three eighth, let's say one fourth guard. You got a, you got a half an inch guard. You got a three quarter. You got a one inch, which is considered I'd call it a five, but it's other people call it something different. But that's a one inch guard. You got your flat top comb. You really need this to be able to do your flat flat tops. You got a regular comb here. You've got the comb. You've got the a brush, you'll need that as you brush the hair to make sure the hair, when you do the fade, you want to brush the hair out of the fade. You won't be able to tell if you really truly got it faded or not until you get the hair off the scalp. You've got a vent brush, you've got different various tools that you use to get your job done. You've got your barberside containers, let it soak around 20 minutes and that, keep your stuff clean. You've got your boxes here, we actually, which are full of clippers. After you clean them, you put them in. Keep them in different guards. You put your guards in here. Comb brushes. Keeps it, keeps it clean. Just a few implements we'll be using in the shop. Now this is a what I call the rock, the the uh, cheating instrument that we use. A, a electric clipper. This is a good close shave. You can clean these things pretty easy. Can come in here. Needs cleaning real good. Come back in. Take this off. Drop it down in the barber side. Just like that. Keep it clean. Easy to use. Matter of fact, I need to go back here before I start this morning. But you can see what we do here. It's not very hard to use. Okay, it's back on. I'll clean that in a few minutes before I get started. But you can see this instrument. Okay, we use the, the trimmers, do the lines with this. And then this is what I use. Uh, new clipper here. You've got a, uh, my guy cleans up every night for me, a uh, clipper, adjustable, and I, you actually adjust this out between the cuts, have it just a little more, leaving a little bit more hair as you adjust it out longer. Put it closer, you have a little less, put it down to the point, with closer, you, you're fading closer. You've got a, uh, a thin, uh, well, an actual uh, one that actually fades close, this is actually really thin here, and this, uh, uh, fading blade is what you need there. You've got your shears. You got your uh, you got your thinning shears. I like to use a paintbrush to dust with. Works good. A regular duster also works well. You got your screwdriver to adjust your clippers with. You'll need that. Uh, you've got uh, your razors. Razors. 
actually use that for haircut and razor there. Uh, you've got various different uh, shears that you use, your blow dryers, <clears throat> your water bottles, basic things you'll be needing to do a good haircut in the barber shop. You got your neck strips, you put a neck strip on each person every time. I know there's a guy that's a famous painter, uh, he's one of the best, he paints stock cars. If you, if you, if I mentioned the stock cars, about everything you've seen there in the past 15 to 20 years, he's had something to do with a lot of them. He's a great painter. He can't get away from that ability that's put within him. He can't just throw it down, it's too much of a, it's in him at the root, it's in him a God-given ability. And uh, if you want to really do good at the business, if it's a God-given ability in your life, you can't hardly get away from it. I know I started in 1980 cutting hair, and I've, I've enjoyed it. I started before then when I was probably 10, 8 or 10 years old cutting hair. Cutting my parent, father's hair, brothers, friends, all the kids in the neighborhood. I had cloth scissors, didn't know what I was doing. But I really enjoyed the business of cutting hair. And in 1980, my grandmother stood behind me and backed me up and paid for me to go to school. And she, she did so many other people. She was a great inspiration that backed us up, you know, gave me the money to go, helped me go. I think it was like 650 or 750, something like that, when we when I went to school over in Bennettsville, South Carolina, at McIntyre's uh, College of Hairstyling. And uh, just a, uh, you know, enjoyable time in my life. Learned a whole lot. And being around other people that were cutting too, you watch them and you learn. Uh, I tell anybody going into barber business, go to people's shops, talk to them, watch what they're doing when you're starting out. Learn from other people. You okay. That's just a, what do we use? A two on, a two two. on the side? Yeah, I think you use the two. Two on the side and then a scissor cut on top all over. That turned out pretty doggone good. Okay, I wanted to show this cut on the video. Where I stand, the grass is cleaner. Where I stand, the love is sweeter. Where I stand, there is no sinking sand. The family stay together, and I love you means forever, oh my friend. That's where I stand. When some sweet talking, good looking woman walks by, she's not gonna turn my head around. Got more love at home than a man can be. I've got my God and my wife to please. And we're a loving family, my friend. That's where I stand. Where I stand, the grass is greener. Where I stand, the love is sweeter. Where I stand, there is no sinking sand. Stay together, and I love you means forever, oh my friend. That's where I stand. Of course, you need a good uh, barber chair. That's a Belmont barber chair. That's one of the better ones there. I've had that for probably 15, 16 years. You've got to have a nice waiting room area, a good place to do business, and uh, everything set up correctly, and. Uh, you can enjoy the barber business just like I do. If you enjoy doing it and you want to get into it, get into it. You can make a good living doing it. You want to stay close to town as you can get, though, if you want to stay busy. The closer you get to more people, the better off you are. Because there's constantly people going and coming. You're not going to keep all that business. So that's something you just got to kind of stay with. You can kind of see what you need to start with. Have your implements there. A lot of different shoes. I don't know how this little scissors just got in this bunch. So my kids here some kind of way let's throw them back in the drawer that junk drawer but uh, you can kind of see what's going on here so you got to have a good mirror need a mirror to be able to show the back of the haircut uh, of course you got to have license to do your work too okay
Yesterday, I knew a guy that uh, cut his hair and got it done, remodeled some of the motels. How the way your hair got across the river? Put his hair straight back. Uh, a lot of hair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. He you talk, uh, is he a young guy? Uh, he's probably about 55. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. You want to follow the thing? Okay, we're going to hit the bottom. Yeah, man. So, right here. Shave fade in right there. Hey, uh, Daddy wants us to go out of harbor and get some life. What? To put it in that sink. To eat that thing up in the sink that's clogging up. I think it's a lie. He said regular lie, jar about that, about eight bucks. What say when you got He said he wants to know where we're at. Let's be separate. We can leave this beer alone. Yeah, okay. But lie, yeah. Say you want to know where we're at. Yeah. I don't know where you were at. Yeah, so we can get that lie. Because we're going to stop that sink. But we know there's little Mac flies coming up. He didn't care where I was at. No. He never got a net. I told him to get the haircut. He said, okay. He wanted to know where I was at. Well, we take him off and finish that backyard once we get there. He just thought I was going to do anything around there. What? I couldn't grab shit. Yeah, you hit me yesterday. He done seen where I done started right now. He's going to come back. Yeah, we're going to come back. That grass when it's that tall, it's wet. Yeah, it's so wet. Moisture. I'm going to be out of waste about, man. That's how tall it is. <laughs> well, I, I burned up all the time of gas and that little bit I put in back here. Well, we couldn't help it. We've been visiting my mom at the hospital. Man, we ain't had time to cut it. Plus, it rained so much. I ain't never been that high. I know it ain't. We'll pass my kneecap. That's pretty high. That's bad for ants, too. Yeah, a little lots of soul stay there. <laughs>
No problem. Side of hill these days. How Y'all live beside Side of mm -hmm. Hill. That's still. Still there at Camp Coker. High Society Hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the social knob. <laughs> when you come to the mm -hmm. They do have okay. Darlington County, um, you know, police or sheriff or highway department, somebody, somebody's down there, you know, that kind of rides through every once in a while, mm -hmm. but no steady police. You guys used to pull you over the hospital. I don't know. I said if we lose the mayor, it wouldn't be a town anymore. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows about the side of you. Mm -hmm. They have tried to make the um, speed limit signs more visible now, though. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not mm -hmm. getting behind the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Sit right there where you know people's got to slow down. See, like they were cooking some money. They, they, they had a little money. All them people that charged. Speed. They had a little bit of money somewhere. Gonna love my wife and children till death do us part. She's written all the pages of my life and heart. Change it if I could to just who I am, oh my friend. That's where I stand, where I stand, the grass is greener, where I stand, the love is sweeter, where I stand, there is no sinking sand, where families stay together, and I love you me. Forever, oh my friend, that's where I stand, oh my friend, that's where I stand. The song I wrote is sitting around here one day. Thanks, folks. <laughs>